Here is a wild question. If you could upload your mind to a machine and live forever, would you do it? That is a choice we are creeping towards. Yuval Noah Harari, in his book Nexus, calls this the biggest fork in humanity's paths. Do we evolve within our biology or become something else? In a world where AI thinks faster, taking plans can read your mind, and your phone already knows you better than your mother, the real question is, how far would you go to evolve yourself? Let's go deep inside this together. Hey, my name is Greg from Ryu. I'm a master coach helping people, teams, and organizations to know, design, and become themselves. Ryu and I are here to help you live a life where you have control. Our brains were designed for survival on the savanna. Not to process 10,000 notifications, lead a team, meditate, meal prep, and respond to 47 psych messages all before lunch. We have about seven slots of working memory. That's it. If you take a look at neuroscience, your brain bandwidth is limited, glitchy, and incredibly biased. We forget names, misread tone, and assume things that never happen. Meanwhile, AI doesn't sleep, algorithms don't get anxious. So what do we do? We start whispering words like enhance, augment, upgrade, Neuralink, brain computer interfaces, direct brain to cloud upload. Suddenly, the line between you and your tech begins to blur. Harari is warning us. Once your thoughts can be digitized, your mind becomes editable, hackable, maybe even ownable. We're not just asking if machines can sync. We're asking if they can replace the parts of us we don't trust. So let's pause. Let's go inward first. Grab a pen. Draw a box. This is your brain's daily RAM. That's random access memory. Now fill it with the top five things that take up your mental energy today. Work task, looping, bad stories, various fears about the world we live in. Write it all down. Now ask yourself, what would you delete, recode, or upgrade without needing a chip in your skull? And how would you do that? Before we talk chips in the brain or AI enhanced memories, let's talk about what makes us ask those questions, make our life meaningful, but we barely understand. Consciousness. Scientists don't fully agree on what it is. Some say it's an emergent property of neural complexity. Others, like integrated information theory, suggest it's a fundamental property of the universe itself, like gravity or time. And while Silicon Valley is trying to code sentience, we still haven't mapped how awareness arises from two kilos of biological material in your skull. One thing I believe looking at the research, is that our consciousness is made of the conjunction between our mind, our body, and the history of our experiences. Here is what we do know. You can expand your consciousness right now without uploading anything. Psychologist Robert Keegan talks about stages of adult development, for instance. This was followed by the work of Susan Cook Greuter on ego development theories that you can see on the screen. Spiral dynamics also show how values and awareness evolve. And there is even more ancient wisdom. It's been teaching this for centuries. In other words, there are some very strong methodologies to understand our consciousness and deepen it. Most people live their lives like they're stuck on one radio frequency. But consciousness, it's the whole dial. You just have to tune in and explore the radio stations. If you want to learn more about levels of consciousness, then check this out. Now, grab your journal. Ask yourself this, what does the next level of me actually look like? Not your job title, not your follower count or likes. I'm talking about your awareness, your presence, your choices. Write it down. At my next level of consciousness, I dot dot dot. How will you speak? Decide. Love. Lead. Learn. Feel. Before we upload ourselves into the cloud, maybe we need to ask, have we even finished upgrading what's already inside? You like this video so far? then you know what to do. Also subscribe and put on the notifications if you want to receive content like this every week. Check out the other videos from famous YouTube channels in the video description. It's always good to look at the topic through multiple lenses. Here is my take on what we've talked about so far. It's not really about uploading or upgrading. It's about integrating. Because the future doesn't have to be about us becoming machines. It should be about staying human intentionally while supported by machines. Brain-computer interfaces are already here. 
Neuralink is testing implants, DARPA has soldiers controlling drones with thoughts. But what happens when we rely on tech to think, feel, decide? Harari warns us, when our choices are shaped by data and dopamine, we risk becoming programmable, predictable, optimized, but no longer sovereign. Much more about the importance of human choice and agency in this video here. But what if we stopped the victim path that we have taken so far? What if we became the designers, not just of our tech, but of our minds, our values, and our awareness? Call it the inner tech, conscious rewiring, mindful presence. You can think of it like a smart home. You don't become the thermostat. You learn how to program it based on who you want to be when you walk in the door. You remain in control of the outcome based on your goal. You want to feel comfortable. Open your notes or journal and make two lists. On the left, list the technology you use every day. Apps, platforms, devices. Now ask, which of these helped me evolve? Which helped me numb? Which shape who I am becoming? On the right, list your inner tech. Purpose, values, beliefs, habits, soul patterns, emotional defaults. Are they programmed by you or inherited from someone else, something else? You don't need to reject technology, but you do need to lead it. Because the line between cyborg and conscious being, well, is drawn by who is holding the pen. So what do we really want? Immortality in the cloud or meaning in the body? Speed or depth? Data or wisdom? We spent centuries trying to escape our biology. But what if being human, imperfect, emotional, fragile, isn't the bug in the system? It's the whole point. Harari reminds us in his book, humans are now hackable animals. And the real risk isn't the tech. It's forgetting we have a choice. We can upload ourselves, but we can also become ourselves. Not with wires or implants, but with awareness, with courage to explore the inner side. So before you reach for the next device to enhance your life, pause. Ask yourself, what is the upgrade I'm looking for is actually a deeper version of me. Harry said it best. Once technology enables us to re-engineer life itself, the real question becomes not what we can do, but what we should do. You don't have to answer that question today, but you do have to start asking it. The superpower that we have as human in the age of AI is emotional intelligence. If you're curious about how this might give you an edge in the future, then check this out.